Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to Not Perfect Zen. I'm very grateful to be here, grateful to be doing another video for you. And I'm especially grateful for the many friends I have around the world because of Zentangle. And I'm especially grateful for those Zentangle friends that I have in my area. And we got together yesterday. There was four of us. And uh, I learned something new that I want to share with you. As part of the eight basic steps, you know, that we always start with gratitude and appreciation. And next we do the corner dots. Well, this has been around for a while, blind corner dots, but um, I just learned about it yesterday. So thank you to Sandy Kelly Jones for sharing that. Um, basically, you just close your eyes to put your corner dots down. And uh, I'm going to do that today. So I'm going to use a three and a half inch Zentangle tile and I'm going to use the corner dots to make my initial border, but I'm gonna have my eyes closed. Okay, so I'm just going to feel where the tile is, close my eyes, and I'm just going to feel, here's my first dot, second dot, third dot, fourth dot. Okay, not too bad. And then I'm just going to do kind of a wavy border. Not looking for anything, perfect. And so there's my border. <clears throat> and the next thing I want to do is add a string. And I think for this one, I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, this is what we did yesterday. And we just put a couple of lines to divide the tile. And the next thing for the patterns. I'm going to use some patterns that I found on the Tangle Patterns website. And all of these patterns were from posts that Linda Farmer made in July of 2010. And I had been trying to come up with ideas on how to pick patterns. And I thought, how cool to go back to the very first ones that were done in July, since I'm in July of 2022, go back to July of 2010. And I'm going to add a little bit here to show you how to find those archives. And then I'll come back and show you the patterns that I picked. So if you go to the Tangle Patterns website and look over here on the left column, this is called the left sidebar, and scroll down until you see archives. So for the pattern that I selected, I wanted to go back, since I'm in July, I wanted to go back to July of 2010. So I went and clicked there. And I found one called Vortex. Okay, so there's July 12th of 2010. And I picked Vortex. And then I wanted to pick a string. So I clicked on strings. And you can just kind of scroll through these. And I happened to find this one, which is in July of 2012. So I picked that string. 
So that's just a couple ways. If you have trouble like me deciding what patterns to do, then you can randomly go to the archives here to find your patterns. And you can go to the strings to find a string. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay, so the patterns that I picked from July 2010 are warped eggs, vortex, and nebula. Well, actually, she calls it DL, nebula. And I thought these two, especially in light of the fact that the James Webb telescope has started sending pictures back, kind of reminded me of all the things that we're seeing from those photos and burped eggs too, a little bit. So let's see how we're gonna make those fit in this. I'm using a Micron 03 because that's what I have that works. So many of my pens are running out of ink, so I'm gonna need to get more soon. A blending stump and a graphite pencil. So let's start by putting vortex into this. Let's see, let's put it in this section. And I'm gonna go ahead and divide that section and I'm gonna go ahead and outline my border here. Okay, and for vortex, this can go in any shape. Let me show you real quick how I did it on this tile. And this also has betweed and paradox, but all of these are vortex. So for whatever shape of area you have, you can just put a little bit of an aura of that in the very center. So let's do that here. Kind of a triangle. And then we're gonna come from the corner and just make curves. And this is what makes it look like a vortex. And this corner, I'm trying to make it go to that corner there. Turn your tile and then just add more lines. I did have somebody tell me that my videos were out of focus. And so I'm trying to do a little bit better about keeping my hand out of the way. Okay, so I'm just trying to space these out enough so that I can get corner to corner. All right, so there's one. Let's put another one over here. And I'm just kind of following the shape that I have. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and fill in these lines corner to corner first. So whatever's more comfortable for you. And then just start putting these. I'm not trying to make these match. 
you can if you want, of course. Okay, so just keep a little bit of a curvy line going across there. All right, so basically that is the pattern vortex. And I like to put a little bit of hatching here in the center where everything goes down just very lightly just to make that a little more dramatic. And when I found out about the um, blind corner dots, I put that hashtag in um, Facebook, I believe, and also on Instagram, tried that hashtag. And it's something that has actually been around that people have been doing for a few years. And uh, I just learned about it. Okay, so I'm just very lightly adding those lines. And I have not planned this tile except for uh, knowing I was going to do the blind corner dots in these patterns. So again, that's the nice thing about Zentangles, not to worry about the end result. Let's just start with something simple and see what comes together. So I really like this pattern. <laughs> it's new to me, but uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. I'll show you another one that I did. And this was a pre-colored tile. And I did uh, this string on that one, string 008 from Tangle Patterns, which happens to also be from July of 2012, I believe. And um, then I just used a watercolor pencil to color along the edges. So I've had fun with it. Okay, next I'm gonna do warped eggs. And this is a grid pattern. And it may be unusual to get it in here, but I'm gonna try it. So just gonna go along here. and add my dots. And this one would come out here, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And come down again. And that's not perfect, but I'm trying to kind of follow that string line. Okay, so the next thing that we do is we're going to make these kind of wavy lines on here. So I'm going to come up on this one, down, up, down. And then this one would go out that way. Okay. And then over here, we're going to do 
just the opposite. So this one is going to go down, up, down, up, down. And this one would go off. Okay, just the opposite here. And remembering that your string lines are just a suggestion. So I'm not going to worry if mine goes past that line. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The first step was putting your dots. The second step is use the dots to help you to make that wavy line. And now we're going to use those dots to make uh, your second set of lines, which are going to come in like this and out. So almost the same thing. So here, this one's going to come in and then out, in. So this one would be coming up about like that. So we'll do the same thing here. Goes in, well, kind of out. <laughs> kind of hard to explain it. Same thing over here. So if this one's going in, this one will also go in. They kind of mirror each other. And then out. Okay. This one goes in, so that same thing here. It's going to go in and then out. Bring it up. Okay, that one is going out that way. So same thing here. It's going to come in. Same thing here. That one's coming in, so this one will do the same thing. Okay, and then we don't see that edge. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is add our little lines inside. So I'm gonna start on this one and I'm just gonna put almost like parentheses there in the center. And then just R that on both sides. Okay, and do the same thing here. And again, these step outs are available on the Tangle Patterns website. I'm going to turn this one. Just turn your tile to keep your hand comfortable. And I do struggle with keeping these the same size, but I'm really not worried about it. One of the interesting things about going back to some of the older tangle patterns, uh, blogs, the articles, is that uh, when you go all the way back to like 2010, 2012, uh, all of the things that I've read talk about using only a white three and a half inch tile and uh, 
black pen. So things have really changed. Okay, so I'm just adding a few little auras down here. All right, now I'm gonna turn and do the same thing here. And I definitely did not get these the same size as what was going this way. And when I practiced it the first time, the same thing happened, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just enjoying drawing these patterns. This one, I think I'll start on that side. Okay. It is still very hot here. In the Houston, Texas area. I'm very grateful to have air conditioning. These would probably be fun to make different colors. Let's see. And put a line across here. And then I think I'll just do that. All right. So this would be coming like this. Same thing here. This one might be going out this way. And then down here. And here would go like that. OK. So that's my first time to try that as a ribbon. Or as a filler. And that's fun. OK. Um, and this one, DL Nebula, is pretty simple. And all we do is put three dots. So you can make these any size. And then you start at this first dot, the top one. And we're going to come around. About halfway, well, a little bit less than halfway. Actually, that did not work. All right. It's not at all what it's supposed to be. <laughs> all right, let's try this again. One, two, Three. And okay, what I did wrong, we go down here and around to the center. Okay. And then we come back out from the center, come around and meet that one. Okay, so not that way. Let's try another one here. I just found that pattern this morning, so I've only done it a couple of times. So again, we start here, come between those other two and make a spiral that comes in. And then you're gonna come 
back out of that and around to your third dot. And let's do that one more time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coming outside my border. We're going to come around, make a spiral. It touches here. So this kind of reminded me of a galaxy. That's why I wanted to do it. That one's going to go behind and touch that one. What can we do with this one? Let's just make a spiral here. Just pretend that's what we meant to do. <laughs> Hmm. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to go over here and make just one more. Come around. Touch. Come back out. Run around. And touch again. So there's our little galaxies. And I'm going to add one more pattern and let's just add therefore, which is just three little dots. I saw that Linda Farmer had done that on hers and I really liked how it looks. And let's just add a few stars here and there, just simple dots. <laughs> I do apologize for this one, but it's okay. Let's do our shading. So for this one, I'm going to put shading right around this center part of the vortex on both of these. And then I'm going to go ahead and put shading on this other line. And on the outside. And then take my blending stuff and just soften it. And I'm going to pull it in towards that other part, but I want to leave that part right there unshaded and it gives it a nice highlight. Just enough to soften that since it's not very big. Okay. And for these, I think I'm just going to follow these lines and add just a little bit of shading. I'm really happy that my channel is called Not Perfect. 
Zen because I did not do this one perfectly. And it's not my goal to do perfect tiles. I just want to enjoy the doing. Enjoy the art. And that's what I encourage you to do. Don't judge yourself harshly. Just have fun. All right. Didn't get that part. Now I'm just going to take my blending stump and soften each one of these. And you can come around. I've still got enough on this blending stump to just soften this border a little bit. Okay. And on these, you can just leave them as they are or maybe just put a little bit of graphite from what's left on your blending stump to give that a little bit of darkness shading right in the center. And this one, I'll just do like that. This is an unidentified foreign pattern. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna call this done. And I, I had fun with it. And I hope you did too. So add your chop. And then last thing is I initialed it. I'm gonna sign the back. And today is 7, 17, July 22. And there we go. So again, we had Vortex by Sandra Strait, Warped Eggs by Livia Chua, DL Nebula, by Donna Hornsby. And we used blind corner dots. All right. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see what I can come up with next time for something different. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great week. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.